This video will cover the topic, sketching the graph of various sine and cosine functions. We will learn how to sketch the graphs of various sine and cosine functions with different constants and coefficients thrown into the mix. As the title suggests, we are going to look at the rules for sketching the graphs of six different types of functions. Notice that the first two functions are similar in that they both have a term multiplied to the entire function, a, and a term multiplied to the x value in the function, b. The only difference between the two functions is that one is sine and the other is cosine. Notice this pattern in functions 3 and 4, as well as in functions 5 and 6. The only difference in these pairs is the use of sine versus cosine. To start sketching the graph of any of these functions, we will start with the general graph of either sine or cosine. Here we can see the sine graph crossing the x-axis at negative 2 pi, negative pi, 0, pi, and 2 pi. It has a maximum of 1, which it reaches at negative 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2. And it has a minimum of negative 1, which it reaches at negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. It is important to memorize this general structure of the sine graph as it will help us sketch more complicated sine graphs in the future. Let's quickly sketch the general graph of sine from memory to make sure we understand. I'll start by sketching some points where I know the graph will cross the x-axis. This is at negative 2 pi, 0, pi, and positive 2 pi. Next, I'll sketch some points where the graph will reach its maximum of 1. This is at negative 3 pi over 2 and pi over 2. Now I'll do the same thing for the minimum of negative 1. This is at negative pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Finally, I can connect the dots to get a final sketch of our sine graph. Great work! Now let's do the same thing but with the general graph of cosine. Looking at this image here, we can see the cosine graph crossing the x-axis at negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. Like the graph of sine, it has a maximum of 1. However, unlike sine, the graph of cosine reaches this at negative 2 pi, 0, and positive 2 pi. It also has a minimum of negative 1, which it reaches at negative pi and positive pi. Again, it is important to memorize this general structure of the graph as it will help us sketch more complicated cosine graphs in the future. Let's quickly sketch the general graph of cosine from memory to make sure we understand. I'll start by sketching some points where I know the graph will cross the x-axis. This is at negative 3 pi over 2, negative pi over 2, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 2. Next, I'll sketch some points where the graph will reach its maximum of 1. This is at negative 2 pi, 0, and 2 pi. Now I'll do the same thing for the minimum of negative 1. This is at negative pi and pi. Finally, I can connect the dots to get a final sketch of our cosine graph. Great work! Now that we know the general structures of both sine and cosine graphs, we can start to input constants and coefficients to the functions and see how these change our graphs. Multiplying the function by a means we multiply the y-coordinates of the points on the graph by a. This means that the function y equals a of sine or cosine of x has a maximum of the absolute value of a and a minimum of the negative absolute value of a. Some important things to know are, if the absolute value of a is less than 1, then the graph will shrink vertically. If the absolute value of a is greater than 1, then the graph will stretch vertically. Changing the sign of a, for example changing it to negative a, will reflect the graph about the x-axis. Multiplying the angle x by b means we multiply the x-coordinates of the points on the graph by 1 over b. The coefficient b will change the period of the graph according to the rules shown below. If b is greater than 0 but less than 1, then the graph will stretch horizontally, meaning fewer cycles within one period. If b is greater than 1, then the graph will shrink horizontally, meaning more cycles within one period. Adding a constant to the x angle value inside the parentheses moves the graph that number of units to the left or the right. If c is less than 0, then the graph shifts right. If c is greater than 0, then the graph shifts left. 
This means that we will add c to the x-coordinates of the graph to get our new graph. Adding a constant outside the parentheses moves the graph that number of units up or down. If d is less than 0, then the graph shifts down. If d is greater than 0, then the graph shifts up. This means that we will add d to the y-coordinates of the graph to get the coordinates for our new graph. Okay, I think I understand these rules. In order to sketch the graph of a sine or cosine function, we start with the general graph that we have memorized the key points of, and then we apply the transformations we have learned to get the points of our new graph. Once we connect all the new points, we have the final sketch of our graph. Great work!